I've been looking for a new mini PC for the whale land that's coming up because I don't want to lug my server rack there. And this little guy by Framework, the Framework desktop, might just be what I want. But unfortunately, I think they've made some decisions that also scares me about the direction of Framework. We'll get into that a bit later. Let's open up the box, see what comes with it. We got our left panel, translucent. And there it is. That is the entire computer. It is incredibly small and incredibly portable, which again is why I was so interested in this little device. We've got stickers. I'll put those on later. Quick start manual, the one screwdriver, which is all you should need, an SSD, or you can BYO, framework desktop tiles. Okay, these are tiny little plastic things that can go on the front of your computer giving it a little bit of personality. As excited as I am by how cute they look, this is actually one of the things I'm gonna be complaining about later. Accessory box, which includes, oh my gosh, even more of these tile packs that we can throw on the front. I believe it holds up to 21 different tiles and you can configure them in any sort of order. And I believe you can also 3D print them. We actually did a main video on LTT when these first were announced and we had some kind of cool designs. C13 power cable, which is not actually normally included. Excuse me? This cable costs $4 on Amazon if I wanna buy one, or $5 from your site, and you have the audacity to charge me for one? The computer doesn't work without it. I'm a little frustrated. I just think it's kind of ridiculous that something that is mission critical for the device to work doesn't come with it by default. Take a deep breath, it's fine, we can move on. Wow, we got a whole whack ton here whole bunch of different slants. We got ones that are sideways. We got some that are vertical. They're actually vented as well, so that way you can have a front intake. You should still put a fan on this CPU, which again, you can buy from their website, or you can just get the fan kit, which is free, and then bring your own fan. So they give you the fan kit for free, but not the power cord. <sighs> In classic framework fashion, you can also get the expansion cards because this device, right at the bottom, you can add up to two. So you could do USB-C, USB-A, the ethernet, has just enough clearance that you could put that. You don't need the ethernet though on this because this NIC in the back is five gigabit. I'm excited, okay, because that's actually pretty cool. Most desktops would be like one or 2.5. Having five is incredible. And lastly, the handle which I've been told they actually didn't send to us, <laughs> but it is an option. I believe each one of these little tiles that you can buy that are like branded or logoed with Linux or something are $5 each. And then a pack of these, which comes with seven, was $10. <laughs> That's one of the things that I alluded to in the intro that I was a little frustrated about. You get zero by default. So if you want to customize the kit fully, you pay an extra 30 US dollars. The reason this computer is so exciting to people like me who want a portable gaming station is because this is using the new Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. It's kind of a mouthful. You don't have to get the maxed out one. You can get the 385 chip, which only comes with 32 gigabytes of RAM. And I think that's probably gonna be good for a lot of people. Obviously, I wanted the maxed out one. I wanna take this thing as apart as I can though, because it is so tiny. How do they fit everything in there? They told me if I wanted to take the hoodie off because I'm getting too warm, I have to plug lttstore.com. So go buy it so I can be free from this. Let's see how apart I can get this thing. Before we boot it up, we are gonna need to install the fan kit, but I wanna tear it all down and see, oh yeah, there is even, but it's a PCIe Gen 4x4 slot right at the bottom, so you could probably add another NVMe SSD on it, or maybe there will be a way to get a riser and an expansion bay for some sort of graphics card or GPU or something. It does already come with two NVMe slots, one on the front here, which is, oh, actually right there on the side, and then one on the back of the board. Do I twist these? Ow, there we go. Use my little wind pans there. There was an arrow, I could have paid attention to the arrow. <laughs> okay, now, now the back, I see. Now it slides up and away. And there's the second SSD spot. There's also our Wi-Fi card back here, which does Wi-Fi 7, which is a nice addition. I wouldn't use it. You have five gigabit, like I said earlier, so but it's a nice addition. They didn't cut any costs there. I realized I said what the chip was, but I didn't talk about why this would make a good gaming PC. And it's actually the Radeon 8060 SI GPU that's included. And because the memory is soldered directly onto the board, you can do similar to what Apple has had for a number of years, which is the unified memory. In the BIOS, you can configure the amount of RAM you want to go to your GPU versus your CPU. 
It doesn't quite work like Apple's and it's not dynamic depending on the workflow. You have to set it, you know, when you boot the PC up. And this is where it gets a little weird for me. Framework did a whole write-up about why they needed to solder the RAM. It's because they want to get the most performance out of the LP DDR5 X memory that is on here. It's just for Framework, which started out as a repairability first company. You can swap all the parts out, buy the parts on their website. It feels backwards and weird that they've soldered the memory on. If you want to upgrade this down the line, you can't. You have to buy a whole new computer or a whole new board. You are getting great performance, so that's again where I get conflicted on this. I wanna get to those performance numbers though and actually see if maybe it's worth it, maybe I can overlook it. We need to install our fan first. Is this the fan? This is the fan kit, it looks 3D printed, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It means you could probably make your own, but everything's all in paper. I do like the packaging material. The only bit of like hard plastic that I've seen so far was what was installed on the computer to help protect it. It's a good, uh, that, that is great. At least they're not killing more sea turtles. There we go. Okay, did it come with instructions? Oh, the QR code. Let's see if they fixed it. Does it take me? Yeah, it takes me directly to the CPU fan. That was an issue in an LTT where I scanned a QR code and it didn't take me to the correct product. Thank you, Framework. Orient the fan so the label is facing downward and the cable is pointed towards the top of the computer. There you go, tells you which direction. Top of the computer, all right. Holy cow, that is going to be a very snug fit once we get that side panel on. I need to plug it in first though. Oh, that's cool, they have a little cutout so you can actually, if I can feed the cable through there. There you go, hey, there you go. That is actually kind of nice so you're not trying to jam your fingers down there. Insert fan duct, which is this thing. Gives it a nice snug little fit. And then install the fan screws. Pretty easy. And then all we need to do is put our side panel on. We've got the clear one here, but there is a solid one available, or apparently you can 3D print one that can make your knock to a fan quite a lot quieter. Apparently the website says, what, five to seven decibels? That is a significant amount for a 3D printed mod, but hey, if it works, it works. Oh, look how cute this thing is. Ah, lots of ventilation. That's awesome. Little magnetic front panel. We should decorate the front panel, right Bjorn? Yeah, all right. Let's decorate it. There's an LTT one. Oh, that's cute. There's a blank one. I mean, you probably don't want to do the solid panels because again, you can fit an 80 millimeter fan in the front here if you wanted more air intake. You probably would want to do like the slotted ones. Oh, there's another Linus one. It's Tux. It's Tux. I put a little Linux, a QR code. Where does this take us? No, no. <laughs> oh my God, I've been hacked. You can tell their framework CEO is a boomer. Still uses that meme. Boomer. Narav, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, we got a little short circuit one. There you go. Finally. <laughs> Some recognition around here. Smiley face, a little pride heart. Hell yeah. Oh, no, I got one here. Oh, that's the other half of wide Linus. <laughs> Just cause it'll bother people. <laughs> Beautiful. Isn't it great? So it turns out the designed ones, you, I don't think you can get these exact ones. Those ones are- Five dollars. I have a slight correction. The orange ones are $15 for a pack of seven. The black ones are $10 for a pack of seven. How much does this cost? Uh, editor, add it all up. But yes, we made our computer look like this for that much money. Oh God. I know I already mentioned the five gigabit port on the back. The rest of the IO is enough. HDMI, two display port, two USB-A, two USB-C, and an audio port. And then on the front is where you get some choice. In our case, all I had on hand was one USB-C and one USB-A. So that's why I chose those ones. All right, let's plug it in and get gaming on it. Oh, thankfully our $5 power cable, long enough for us to use at the desk there. If you can't tell I'm a little salty, we had to pay for one. What I'm not salty about though is telling you about our sponsor. Delete Me, take back your online identity from pesky data brokers with Delete Me's data removal service. They'll comb the web searching for information you don't want out in the open and send removal requests on your behalf. This process can take ages if done manually, so think of it as time saved, especially when you extend the service to your loved ones with their flam flamily flans. 
We're keeping it. Get 20% off at joindeleteme.com slash short circuit or by scanning the QR code on the screen now. God, I hope they put one there. How embarrassing. <laughs> Cables are already pre-run. I didn't even get to use mine. Look how tiny this thing is on the desk compared to my headphones. <laughs> I actually was just gonna go turn it on because, but where's the power button? Is that it? Yes, that is it. That does not look like a power button, but hey, is it booting? <laughs> oh, it's got post lights. Oh, there it is. Hey, we couldn't detect an operating system. Oh wait, did I actually put the SSD in? I assumed it was in. <sighs> Elijah. Elijah. No, stop. I just got so excited to boot it up, I forgot to put the SSD in. <laughs> this will be super quick. We'll do the back one, going from the back. Oh yeah, look at it right there. Ooh, ooh. what's on the little hinge? Okay, that's kind of nice. Dude, speed run. Very excited to see this. What's a QR code on the left of the framework logo on the phone? There's no way this works. I will copyright this whole video framework and blame it on you. <laughs> okay, I want a game on this thing. Here we go, we're in Cyberpunk, driving around. I've set it to 1080p, but everything is cranked, except for ray tracing, no ray tracing on. And right now, our 1% lows appear to be about 60 FPS. Dude, this is awesome. <laughs> this is a totally playable experience. Obviously, higher FPS, the better. I get it, right? Look at the size of this thing. And I'm getting better than the PS4 was at launch. Probably better than the PS5 was at launch. Holy cow, okay, it's dipping a little bit. We're down to 50 FPS in the 1% lows. And the fan is definitely ramping up. I can start to hear it a little bit more. Now that we died, let's turn on ray tracing. Let's, you know, let's try to cripple this machine. We'll do ray trace lighting, medium. And then I'll turn off reflections. Let's see if we get a playful experience. Oh, cinematic, 24 FPS, dude. No, this is not a playable experience. I would not be happy with this. Can we tweak the settings a little bit more? 50 FPS in the 1% lows? It's about what we had before. Yeah, I turned off most of the ray tracing though, so you know. Yeah, not a great experience with ray tracing. Let's try like an eSport title. I'm gonna, I wanna take this thing to a LAN party and that's what I would be playing mainly. I'm not playing Cyberpunk at a LAN. Do you play any uh, competitive games? PUBG would be the only one. No, but do you play like real, like video games people take seriously or? PUBG. I uh, just cut for a second. Yeah, he's going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Loading up in a bot match of CS2. Our 1% lows, oh, got up to 100. Oh, 90 there. Okay, so it seems around 90 is where it drops the lowest. And our average right now, oh, that's my teammate. Our average right now is about 150. I don't know if I expected anything higher. We're on 1440p with everything maxed out. It's hard to be upset at this performance when you look over and see the size of the computer. It doesn't feel warm, so that fan is definitely doing its work. Man, it is quiet though. It's much quieter than Cyberpunk, so we might not even be pushing our CPU that much on this. Performance, let's talk about some lab performance. At 1080p on our list of games here, Alan Wake, Cyberpunk, Dota 2, F1, and Red Dead 2, it never dropped below 60 FPS in the 1% lows. And in some of the averages in Dota 2, it got up to 144. That is pretty impressive for this little machine. And in two games, Cyberpunk and F1, it actually outperformed a 4060 desktop GPU. It's more expensive than a 4060 desktop GPU, but again, it, it's, very competent for gaming. And it, we did try ray tracing benchmarks. Like you saw me play, it wasn't actually a good experience, both in Cyberpunk and again, the 4060 actually outperformed when you turn ray tracing on. And then the highest benchmark we tried was a 1440p benchmark, 60 FPS lows in Red Dead, which I would still consider playable. It did drop too low, in my opinion, to Alan Wake 2. So I think 1080p is kind of the sweet spot for this machine, which isn't a bad thing, but this device might not actually be mainly focused on gaming. It's definitely a bonus, but what you're probably interested in, or a lot of people will be interested in, is the AI performance. I know, scary buzzword, right? But you can still run many different LLMs on your machine locally, and you could even buy a bunch of them and using that five gigabit connection, maybe daisy chain them and make a big cluster. And the AI performance on this thing is freaking sick. We had our labs team test with text generation on Llama 2, and it freaking destroyed the 4060. I, again, it's a 4060 GPU. I mean, maybe if you had a bunch of 5090s, it would crush this thing. But this thing is as much as a 5090 on its own. And the benefit of this is you can allocate up to 96 gigabytes of VRAM to your GPU. 
unlike the 5090, which is limited to 32 gigs. You can't configure that. In some of our other tests though, on multi-core in Cinebench 2024, this thing got on par with an i7-14700K. And in single core, it was basically on par again with the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. So again, some productive workload environments. Maybe if you just want to throw a render on this thing after you're done editing it on a different computer, again, maybe making a render farm out of them, connecting all of them together. It's pretty sick. In terms of temperature on this bad boy, because you notice I did comment on the fan. It's getting a little up there if you let it run for a bit. It didn't seem to really thermal throttle unless you really stress test it. Cinebench 2024, it did get up to 94 degrees Celsius, but on the entire run, its clock speeds were able to average 4,500, which is way higher than base, not quite as high as it can get up to, which is 5.1, but the fact that it is able to stay above its base clock for the entire length of the run means it's never having to throttle down that severe in the event of a temperature overload. I guess it depends though, if the performance you saw today is worth the price. This config right here is 2,300 US dollars. It does start at about a thousand US dollars without all the little, you know, knickknacks in the front here. Those are all add-ons. And I think that it is worth the price. It is a lot of money, but again, it's compromising on some things that made framework framework. The soldered memory, the cost of these little doodads. I know I keep hyper fixating on it, but it, it seems ridiculous to me. Let me know what you guys think down below. <laughs> really fun to pop out. If you guys enjoyed this video, <laughs> sorry. If you guys enjoyed this video, I want to see another one of my videos. Go check out my first short circuit, which was called the Game Scent. You got to smell your games through the power of AI, and it smelt terrible, really bad, like ass. <laughs>